Hello, fun people in the world. What I have here today is a, uh, a fun little project that I'm going to undertake, and that is the uh, uh, hopeful restoration of a Sony Walkman WM2. And this is the little guy that I'm talking about. I got it uh, actually in its original box with the manual. The only thing that was missing is the uh, the headphones. I guess they had long ago given up the dust, given up the uh, ghost, and uh, so he didn't. The fellow I bought this from didn't actually have the uh, original headphones. That's fine. Um, I've got others, and uh, that's what I'll use to test it. So uh, the usual issues. Uh, which is uh, you can play it, you put batteries in it, try to put push play, you hear some motor dies and nothing's going on. So uh, suspect that it is uh, a belt, but uh, we'll delve into it a little bit further. And hopefully, oh, it looks like I thought somebody was coming out of the driveway. Um, we'll delve into it a little bit further and hopefully that's, that's all it, the problem is. Um, the guy actually kept very good care of it. Um, by the fact that he has the original uh, box and owner's manual and a um, little bit of a just a superficial scratch right about there but you can't actually see it otherwise the uh, the case works good you open it up looks good all around looks like it's been well cared for uh, given the age uh, these are probably I don't have the actual age here but uh, I would say early 80s like uh, 80 or or something like that 81 um, I actually used to sell these back in the day overseas in a military market uh, military PX my father was in the military we spent uh, five years uh, actually four years in baden solingen and then two years in Laar, Germany uh, my father was Air Force anyway um, worked uh, in a hi-fi shop for a couple of years of those uh, six years where I was uh, the rest of the, I was going to high school and then I came back and I worked for the Sony store uh, for a, 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 about a year before I actually joined the military myself and now I'm retired um, so uh, what we'll do is we've opened I've opened it up the heads look like to be in good shape and you can kind of see the insides there uh, the uh, battery door which is a common thing that breaks on these is uh, fully intact uh, looking inside you can actually see that the uh, the batteries it doesn't look like any no batteries have actually exploded in there so all the terminals are uh, still in great shape so um, I have a good feeling about this Walkman so we'll uh, we'll deke into it so uh, there is a bit of a write-up here um, the WM2 or Walkman 2 as it's known took the mantle from the TPSL2 as the smallest stereo cassette player in the world it could hardly be smaller being only just larger than the cassette it played and back in the day that was quite a feat. Uh, main change that they made for miniaturization was putting the, uh, the head assembly inside the, uh, the front cover um, and arranging the cassette to be inserted the other way around. Because of this the heads did not have to retract into a case for the cassette to be removed, saving a very worthwhile amount of space. So this is on, uh, you can go to it, walkmancentral.com products WM-2. Uh, you can go to their website and read up about the, uh, the history of this. Um, I owned one of these things for probably five years and I have played it religiously back in the day and uh, was very sad the day that it broke. So here we are. We're I've uh, reconnected with it and we're going to try to make this one uh, a goer. So follow along. What I'll do is I'll uh, break out into uh, time lapse. Uh, we'll take it apart. Usually you have to take the lid off, uh, front assembly, and then it'll access the, uh, the guts of it. And we'll see what the shape of the, uh, the belt is in. in. Uh, I suspect that it's, uh, it's mush. So we'll We'll uh, tackle that as it comes, and I'll break out into uh, into discussion when I find anything of interest that uh, might uh, might interest you. So, if uh, there are lots of uh, I'm sure uh, YouTube videos on how to uh, 
disassemble these and reassemble them, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time doing that. Uh, they're quite common. The one thing you got to be careful of is there's a little spring in here that tends to spring when you take it apart. Some people tape it, some people hold it with their thumb while they're disassembling it. But that's the one key thing that you don't want to lose is that little spring that holds this uh, this uh, opening clip for the uh, the front door. So we'll uh, we'll work on that and see how it goes. Some of the tools I use, I just use one of these little mini electric screwdrivers with all the bits that you can possibly need in the universe on it, and uh, a little magnetic pad. So I work over top of that. So if any screws do drop or a spring does drop. Uh, it'll stick to the magnetic pad and then uh, we'll set all of this kind of stuff aside. Uh, what I normally do is I use a little uh, soup bowl to uh, put all the parts and pieces in. Uh, as you can see my workbench here is a, is a bit cluttered. We've got stuff lying all around and, uh, and it's out in my garage so if it hits the dirt here or hits the floor uh, it'll be a long search before I find anything that I drop on the floor. Um, so what we'll do is we'll try to use a, uh, a soup bowl for that and uh, keep all the pieces in one location uh, well organized as I disassemble it so that I can reassemble it in the same order I disassembled it, in reverse order of the way I disassembled it. So uh, let's tear into it. Okay, first off, what I'm going to do before I delve into it too much is to uh, check the, uh, so there's the battery lid right there. I'm going to put some batteries in it and see if I'm getting power. Hopefully we are. So we'll pop it in the correct direction here. Make sure those battery tabs are out so you can easily pop them out when, uh, when you're done with them. So we'll disassemble it without the batteries in them. Well, actually, you got to put this one in first because there's a little recess on there. Let's try that again. Me and my big mitts. So in that one goes, and in that one goes. Then you leave these little cloth tabs out so you can easily pop the batteries out. And we'll put the lid back on. Carefully not to uh, crack it. We'll go over and get a tape. Let's see. And we'll see what happens. So in goes the tape. Make sure it's the right way. And push play. And you can hear the motor noise. Light goes on. I'm not going to play it for long because I don't want to spool anything or wreck anything. And uh, so that's a good sign. We got power. It's not rotating. So even without the tape in, well, it's rotating a bit. Take up, uh, take up reel is rotating. So, which tells me that uh, I believe it would be the belt. So, let us jump into this a little bit further. Hopefully you saw that. And uh, we'll take, take it from there. So I'm seeing that uh, they don't really have a good uh, video. There's a couple of people that have taken one apart. One guy sort of did the trial and error method. And then there was a, a Japanese one that I saw where the guy took it apart, but he didn't really speak English. <laughs> so I just kind of followed what he did and uh, maybe we'll do the same thing. So the first thing that he did was he uh, took off this uh, volume control thing. So we'll turn it right down to zero and then we'll, I'll just use a set of uh, uh, dividers here that uh, I used for geometry back in the day and what we'll do is turn that with the two holes in the volume dial to get that and it's a big screw that comes out as you can see it's unwinding 
And here's my little bowl. I found a little piece attached to my magnet from another walk-in, I think. So we're going to keep that for... I brought it from downstairs, this magnetic pad. So we're rotating this uh, volume dial off, as you can see. And then that allows you to pop this off, and it's uh, sort of hex or a rectangular shaped there. And you can see how it goes into the volume dial. So we're going to just keep those two together so we don't lose them in our little soup bowl. And uh, the next thing they did, and one of the things you got to really be careful, as I mentioned, is this opening thing. Because in uh, the one that the one fellow that took it apart on YouTube um, almost lost the spring. He didn't realize there was a spring that was uh, loosely attached to this thing. So. What I'm probably going to do is use some uh, masking tape and what we'll do, we're going to take these two screws off and before we disassemble it I'm going to tape it on there so that that won't separate and then we can do it uh, better. So I'm going to take the two black screws off on the side here by the uh, tape normal metal uh, switch side. So here's my fancy little electric uh, screwdriver. So what I'll do is I'll just start it. And, then, and of course it's got a magnetic tip to it. And what I'll do is I'm going to put it on my little magnet pad here so it doesn't go walking. And I'm going to keep all those screws together as I disassemble it. got this online on Amazon. It's one of the best investments I ever made was, uh, was buying this thing. So there we go. Oh, and then the other thing, I, what I should have done first is uh, take the, uh, the, the, the front cover off too. So there's two little screws here on the end. Two silver screws, and they're bigger screws, so I'm doing the whole video of this so that way if I take something apart and I forget the order in which I've done these things, I can uh, watch back the video and, uh, and reconstruct my disassembly here. So once again, you can see that on the edge, the hinge, I've got a screw here and a screw there that have to come out. And then that enables you to take the, uh, the cover off. And that's the cover with the window to allow you to see the, uh, the cassette in the window. So that will come off. And then there's a little wire that's attached. No, there isn't on this one. So the cover comes off, yeah. What's on this side? There we go. So then we're going to take... taking the two black screws off and now we're going to take the two silver screws and once I do that I'm going to uh, tape that uh, tape this opening switch here so once again the two silver so on this uh, metal pad or this pad the screws that are in the top, top left corner are going to be for the outer case and for the hinges. Now when I take this apart, there's going to be a little wire attached to the... Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to tape this up. And hopefully that will hold it while I disassemble this. So this spring doesn't go flying. And the reason you have to take this uh, volume knob off is because that will hold that case from popping out. And uh, also you have to sort of play with it a bit because these two recessed volume. And this is interesting that it's got two headphone jacks which allows uh, a, a pair of buddies to uh, listen to the same uh, tape at the same time. Um, they don't make them like this anymore. It's just too expensive to... Uh, you know, do individual controls, and uh, all these controls are just so well made. Okay, so we got to finesse this apart without forcing anything. So there comes the back. 
Oh, and then there's the spring that I talked about. And of course, the spring is now gone. Maybe it caught on the uh, magnet. Oh, there's the spring. Ooh, we got really lucky. So the tape thing doesn't work. <laughs> so there's the spring. There's the, uh, the opening device. And I'm going to put the spring in my little soup bowl and the opening device in the soup bowl so I don't lose that. Okay. Well, that was uh, a good try. But uh, it's easy to go in. You can see a little reten or reten retainer there that you put the spring on. Uh, I have the WM5 and I took that apart and it's a very similar uh, process and uh, that's how it goes back together. So anyway we're going to try and get this thing back apart. So without wrecking any wires or anything. Oh, and this cut gets loose there because the uh, There we go, that comes apart. And what they explained in the uh, Chinese, or in the, uh, the other one was that these were spot welded here. So it'd be a good idea to just tap, put a little bit of glue on there just to break that apart. So you got some wires here that are attached to the, uh, that are attached to the uh, volume control on the, uh, this back or the front case here. So there's one little screw that you take apart there so that you don't have to have this torquing on the... Uh, so you take that apart. Kind of a brass looking screw. And then we'll put that right there. You can see it's much larger than the case screws and much uh, larger than the hinge screws. So that allows you to take the volume control piece out and that way you don't have to over, there's a little retainer clip here. Okay. And then there's another wire that attaches on, which is a grounding wire to this little grounding pad. So what we'll do is we'll leave that apart, we'll leave that together like that. And then the next thing we do Okay, what I did was I forgot to uh, take the batteries out, as I mentioned. So we're going to take the batteries out, one at a time, using those cloth uh, removal devices. And the next thing we have to do is we have to take this uh, PCB board off. And there's a number of screws. There's one here, one here. Uh, one there, and that may be it. Oh, one there. So, one, two, and they're numbered here. So, uh, that one I can't see the number on it. This one says five. No, they aren't all numbered. Okay, so one, two, very hard to see, three, Four. And then I think there's one in here somewhere, maybe under one of these pieces of tape. We'll find that out pretty quick. There's little arrows that point to them. One, two, three, four, and that's really all I can see. Okay, so let's take the PCB apart. We can see that the belt it's a bit flimsy. Maybe it's on there, I don't know. It looks like it hasn't been properly cleaned. We'll have a look at it anyway, we'll see. One. This one is marked E. sort of putting them in the same place where I took them off. Uh, there's the other one right here. Another one. There.
Okay, I'm going to go refer to the manual here. Okay, it is only uh, four screws there. So what I've been noting in uh, the manual and some online videos is that uh, there's these little hunks of tape here that hold everything together. And so we can gently use a uh, set of tweezers to pull them apart. They're kind of dry, the glue is all dried on these. But they are holding, which is good, I guess, that they've held so long. See, so right in here, there's some tape attached to this uh, tubular motor here. We're just pulling the tape gently without ruining or without pulling any of the wires that are attached to it. Don't want to pull any of those solder joints out so that we can remove the, uh, the PCB basically. right here on the edge on the end piece where you can see the other uh, pulley wheel right there and I don't think this has ever been apart before just by judging the, uh, the condition of it there's this little gray wire on the end here that's got to come out to allow the uh, board to swing free so we pop that out and now we can gently try to lift up oh there's a little bit more tape holding this on right there and now we can kind of pull this up to see the belt assembly I take this back. I think somebody has been in here before. There is a belt there. I think it's the wrong size though. It's not the... Uh, the WM5 looks almost identical to this. I think this belt is the wrong size. Very heavy. So I don't have the right size belts here. But what I do have is I have a belt kit that I got. That's probably where this one came from. I think they just used the, uh, they didn't use a really thin one. So we need to get one that's about that size see and of course I'm going to order the correct belt for it when I get a chance no, that's too this one might be it right there that might do the trick so we're going to clean that out uh, some isopropyl alcohol. Make sure all the uh, there's no slippage of the gear. Okay. So what I'm using is 99.9% .9 pure isopropyl alcohol to clean out the, uh, the components here. 
You can tell by the shape of this thing that it's been sitting there like a long time and it's flat. It's not very spongy. It's very solid. Well, this new one is very rubbery, very much thinner, and uh, looks like to be a good correct size. So that'll get me going anyway until I can order the proper size belt, belt from uh, this place I go to. It's called fixyouraudio.com. Looking at the gear wheels inside, they're all looking good. There's no cracks or missing teeth, which is good. There's nothing coming off on this, so I think it's pretty clean. At least uh, some of these you take them apart and these right, turn to complete goo. On, which I do believe this is actually the original because the way the tape was on it and everything, it didn't look like it had ever been removed. I think the, the belt just got old and stiff, and that was the uh, basic problem. And even the motor uh, pulley is really, really clean. If you can see inside here, right there, that's where the motor pulley is. have these real sharp needle nose just to make sure there's no muck or guck in there. Yeah, it looks clean to me. Okay. Let's try. Let's try this. Wrap it around there, and then it goes on to that one, and then there's a 90 degree twist. And the question is, which way is the 90 degree twist? And I think it goes clockwise. So what we need to do is get this past these wires to get that twist on it, and in behind the wires. So, this is hard to explain in the, uh, hard to show, there, where's my needle nose, they're there, That looks like it's going to work. Everything's working. Okay. Let's get everything back into place, including pulling this back through. So there's this gray wire on the back side here that I had to release in order to allow it to. Uh, pull the, the board away and that's attached to the head so that's your head wires and there we go that's in place and now everything's floating into place now we can put back the uh, put back the screws for the main board or the main PCB so we'll do those one at a time and that's these silver ones here Looks like everything's in place. And my hand 
and tighten. I don't use the uh, motor to tighten these because I don't want to strip anything. You can feel when it just starts to tighten down there. Really like the magnetic feature of this screwdriver. And what, of course, we'll do is we'll treat the uh, the volume knob or the volume potentiometer with deoxit. And now getting these things to stick back again is going to be oh yeah, this is actually working. Yeah, it'll stick down. And then we have to put back our volume control. And before I do that, I just want to hit it externally with some deoxit. D5 deoxit. Okay, so I don't want to disconnect this nice little grounding screw there. There we go. Or grounding wire that goes around it. Oh, I see. I see. It goes this way. I was almost trying to put it in backwards there for a minute. Some light. That's better. Okay, there's two little uh, plastic uh, clips there. Oh, there it is. And it's got a, this little board has to fit under it in order to uh, for it to sit in properly. We got it. We just managed to get it in. And whoops. This one is a little bit too big or too small, so we'll use this one. That's not magnetic. to reassemble this thing properly. And again, carefully, so we don't wreck anything. Tape is sticking through here. There. Okay. Now is the hard part getting that spring and the open thing back in. So I'm going to try and do this over this magnetic thing so this sticks to it if it falls.
you see the bottom is the uh, so there's two little channels on the back of this opening opening button here or slider not a button there's two little channels and you can see how it's shaped I hope you can see it the bottom channel there's a little plastic nib on the side here that actually slides in there and that keeps it on the rail the spring actually slides into here and then there's going to be a little bit of space left over so you slide that into that one it's a little bit uh, bent so I'm going to reverse it just so that it uh, straightens itself out there we go actually we'll go back the other way very delicate spring okay there we go and we need to leave the space on one side so that oh I guess I should have put that on before I drop that down see got it got it yeah it does go in that upper channel but I had it upside down so let's do that again this on the WM5 much easier but I think I see now I got lucky on that one because it's a tricky little guy to get in there maybe I'm gonna do it when, I, when it's fully out
okay, the unthinkable happened where this thing just jumped out of my, sprung out of my hand and fell on the floor and I thought I would never see it again, but I used this little magnetic tool to comb the area where it landed and within a second I actually found it. So that was a very, 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 very close call. Yeah, wow. Yeah, let's do this again. And if I, again, I don't mean drop it again, I mean let's get it fixed again. Man, this is a tricky, tricky thing. Did it in? There it is. That's how easily I did it last time. Okay, happy with that. So spring is in. Clasp is working good, and now it won't spring because it's actually in behind the uh, the outer case. Could have done a better design on that. I Still, these things are in pretty pretty cool things. So, okay, and the way, the uh, the way it works here is the uh, the black case, the black side of the case, are the black screws, and the silver side of the case are the silver screws. So that's a good uh, easy way of remembering that. So once again, back to my magnetic electric screwdriver. go and we just do it hand tight no not over torquing it same idea here hand tight and now we're on the black side so the black screws go in Snug, so they don't back out while under use. And then we can now put on the cover. Other ones I've had FM cases or FM tuners and everything on this cover, so it makes it a little bit uh, more difficult to disassemble them. But uh, in this case, it uh, works great. And these ones have a little. Uh, Round edges. It's not threaded all the way to the uh, to the screw post, so it allows the uh, it allows it to flow. Oh, we're not even close on this one. There it is. There we go. Perfect. All right, let's hope that does it. So we'll put the batteries back in. Remembering to put the one closest to the uh, to the hubs here in first. There we go. 
and we'll hit both uh, on controls. I've got a set of headphones here, so what we'll do is we'll exercise those uh, headphone jacks. Let it dry out. And same with the, uh, the volume control now. So we were on zero. So you gotta make sure that that inner piece lines up with the uh, little nylon thing it should be close to zero there we go I think that's it Okay, and then we put this back on. And use our handy, actually I'm gonna just use tweezers for this for as my handy dandy tool for this. It actually works better than these, these are flimsy. See how the tweezers, these are needle nose tweezers hold the volume dial as you screw this in otherwise the do do volume dial will rotate with it and and then because we deoxed it put deoxid on that control we're just going to exercise it a bit and just let it uh, seep into the uh, the contacts there and clean it as well as we'll exercise this a little more and let it give it some dry time there we go and let's give it a whirl Fancy tape again, whatever I did with that. There it is. See that it's rewinding now. Not the right belt, I don't think. So well, I think maybe what I did was I twisted it the wrong way because it's re without a tape in it, it's rewinding, it's fast forwarding, 
and it's playing. No, it's not playing. So I think it might be twisted the wrong way. So I'm going to have to do all that again. I'll take it apart and uh, flip the twist that uh, belt the other way, and maybe that's going to work properly. I should have uh, should have recorded that. Well, I'll have a look at it uh, in the videos on the other guys' videos. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, it seems to be bunging up when I push uh, rewind. I can get it to fast forward. When I hit rewind, you can see it slightly move and play. It slightly moves and then stops. So I don't know, maybe the linkage inside has got some sticky grease or something, or maybe I've got the wrong size belt. But we're going to try and see what we got. See if we can sort it out here. So, back to taking the uh, panel off. We'll leave the batteries in just so I can see what's going on here. those four. We're going to remove this tape so we can see all these wires intact. Yeah, they're all intact. Very fine wires. Very fine. And then this guy right here needs to release and then and then we can lift that up and see what is really going on here yeah I think I twisted it the wrong way As you can see here that the belt, well, it's coming below that. It seems to be going at the right angle, but let's try twisting it the other way. So let's put this through.
Let's twist it the same way. Getting close. Okay, I see what the problem is. It's nothing to do with the uh, the belt. The belt's on fine, and what it is is this uh, flywheel here is cracked, and there's a big gap there. So when it gets to that, it just seizes up. So what needs to happen here is that gear wheel needs a replacement. So that spins on that. So should be able to take that out. I'm gonna figure out how to take that out. That piece out, there's two, three screws that hold it in, I see. That will come out. And then I can take that gear wheel. But first, I got to be able to source that plastic gear wheel. And if I can't source it, then I got to figure out a way of fixing it, which may mean epoxying it or gluing it in place. So we've got a little more uh, issues than I had anticipated. I should have guessed when uh, I heard that clicking sound that there was something a little more going on than just a belt. So, we're not dead in the water. It just means I've got to order some parts, if I can, order the parts. And uh, I'll take some photos of this. And uh, then from there, we'll see if we can order 
see if we can get it back online. So I'm going to put this video into abeyance until I can figure out where I can source the parts for this. And we'll pick it up from there if I can, uh, I can do that. So, more, fo more to follow. Well, here we are a few weeks later and uh, had uh, two weeks of beautiful time on the west coast here uh, sailing in my boat out to uh, uh, Princess Louisa Inlet, Chatterbox Falls and Malibu Rapids and all that kind of stuff. So back with a fresh perspective. Uh, so while I was doing all of that, uh, I had ordered a part from a place called in Slo Slovakia. Um, called Fix Your Audio. Here we go. This is where uh, where it came from. Uh, you can see uh, from Kosici, Slovakia. Anyway, uh, the part that came in is the exact part that I need, which is to fix that uh, that center drive gear which is a common ailment in the, all the direct drives, but it's also the same gear that's used to fix the WM2. And here is the uh, install, so it's a metal ring with the, uh, the correct uh, teeth uh, on the gear and these little micro screws. I've already done one on a direct drive. And uh, so this is the part that we're going to um, install on this beauty here to make it work again. And uh, with the belt already changed and with this, uh, we should probably have a high degree of uh, probability of being able to repair this, uh, providing I don't muck anything up. So uh, I'm going to end this uh, video at this part because it is so, so long. And uh, we're going to uh, make a part two when I start tackling this. So I just got this in the mail. and. Uh, uh, I'm going to suck back, reload, look at a few videos and uh, installation instructions that actually come on FixYourAudio.com uh, site on how to uh, change these things. I'll get uh, a little bit refreshed on how to do that. And uh, we'll pick up part two uh, with tearing it back apart again and installing uh, this uh, repair center gear wheel which is uh, what is needed to get this thing running like new again. So see you at part two.